Welcome to Marathonology. Marathonology is a program about facing the destructive patterns of our lives and finding the principles to deal with those patterns. We are using the principles behind the 12 steps, which are primarily known from the AA environments. These steps have proven efficient to deal with different life-challenging situations. And today you will meet psychologist Vibeke Frederiksen, who have experience with the 12-step process herself, and who will guide us into some of the major and general problems that we face connected to the step of today. She will also give us some practical insight as to how to work with the step that we are dealing with. I will give you an introduction to the step itself, and also show you some of the biblical principles behind it. And we have arrived at step number nine, and it sounds like this. We may direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Working with the nine step is for most of us a scary process. Many of us found it difficult to start looking at those relations that we went through in the eighth step and now we also have to act on them. But there's no other way than to just go through the process and take the persons one by one and that is what we're doing. Very often we have a tendency when we have heard it or uh, done bad things to other people that we tend not to do anything about it. And that is the behavior we are trying to change now. But another tendency that is just as, difficult, uh, just as dangerous for us is that we uh, tend to react or respond too quickly. We go to people and try to solve things while we are still frustrated or angry about the situation. And we might end up with a situation that is worse and, than what we started out with. So what we do in this step is that we are careful to take advice, make sure that we uh, are not angry, that we are calm and at peace with the situation before we do anything. An important rule for us working with the nine step is that we take other people's advice. It is important that we go through the situation with another person and make sure that we won't do things worse, that we won't hurt other people more than we have done already, and that the res responsibility we take is our part and not something that is related to other people or uh, that is actually their fault. So we go through every situation and we take the response from a friend who knows the step already, who can lead us and guide us and help us if we should go and do admin or if we should not. Some of us has a tendency to apologize for everything as soon as someone else wants us to do it. And it's very important that the nine step is not meant to be this uh, behavior, but we have to stop that and we have to prevent this behavior because it's not good for ourselves to do admin or to apologize for things that are not really our fault. If you know you have this tendency, it is very important that you take advice from another person and that you go carefully through the situations and make sure that what you do admin for is what you have done and not something that other people demand from you or want from you because that will not be good for you. We have now arrived at step nine. Previously in the process, we made a list, a list of people who, ha who we have harmed through our destructive behavior. And now we are continuing that process in the sense that we go to these people. And the formulation of step nine goes like this. We may direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so, we would injure them or others. A friend of mine who um, was really kind of uh, beat up in life he had had many problems with alcohol and uh, drug addiction, so on and so forth. He found himself really eager to find some kind of help in life. And when he heard about this process, he agreed to uh, go into it. 
one thing he said to himself was that uh, reaching to step nine, he would uh, stop and maybe go back to step number one. But for sure, he would never go into that step and act upon that. After having been through the process, of course, he ended up doing step nine and all the steps in, in the program. And he actually uh, testified that doing this uh, step nine, going to these people was a closure that he really needed to kind of finish up uh, all of the destructive patterns of his past and really be able to move on in life. We are dealing with a kind of justice, a principle of justice in, in this part of the process. And that is a well-described area when we uh, look at the Bible. And one of the key verses of the Old Testament sounds like this. The Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, when a man or woman wrongs another in a, any way and so is unfaithful to the Lord, that person is guilty and must confess the sin he has committed. He must make full restitution for his wrong, add one fifth to it and give it to all the persons he has wronged. So here we have a principle of uh, seeing eye to eye with what we have done wrong and also confessing it uh, to God, but not only confessing it and realizing what we have done, but also uh, making amends so what we are dealing with here is a clear biblical principle. Looking at it in the New Testament, we see that what used to be a law in the Old Testament is more like a natural consequence in the New Testament. In the New Testament, we are dealing with the focus on what Jesus did. We are dealing with his uh, uh, death, with his resurrection, with his uh, uh, ability to go in our place and do what we could not do. But the natural consequence of that love is that receiving his deed, receiving whatever he did, is our wish to do whatever we can do. So when we deal with this step, we are dealing with the fact that we have let God do what he can do and what we could not do. But now we are going to do what we can do to make it up to people that we have hurt in the process. I remember when I was dealing with my issue in this process, my destructive pride, I had to realize the fact that I had harmed people uh, because of my pride. And one of the consequences was that I had made people focus on my projects and neglect their own projects. So part of my making amends to the people close to me was to take a step back and let them focus on their own ambitions and life projects and for me myself to be a partner and support in, in their projects. This is just an example and there could be plenty of examples of how we do amends and it's all connected to the specific harm that we have done to other people. Now we need to focus on what do we need to go into this process? What kind of help do we need? And one area which is uh, so necessary for us uh, to find is we need to find courage to do this. For many of us, this is connected with a lot of pain uh, and we fear the pain of having to formulate this to other people. We also fear the shame of having to go to, to people and actually expose ourselves, expose our weakness and admit that we were in the wrong in what we did. And some of us also fear because uh, we are going to people that we were related to and they were also hurting us and it's uh, kind of painful to have to go back again and face these people and in a sense face all that happened and things that we have tried to conceal and suppress for so many years. So we really need courage. We should not be uh, shameful about having fear. It's normal to fear. What is important for us is to know how we deal with this fear, that we look it straight into the eyes, that we uh, are able to put words on it, formulate it, and that we do so when we pray to God, that we do it uh, in honesty to ourselves, and that we also uh, put words on it uh, with the people that we are walking with in this process. We also need wisdom in this process. Wisdom as to know which people to go to, and of course also how we deal in, with the uh, situations that we will find ourselves in when we do so. And in the 12-step environments, we work with different categories of people that we uh, should go to or should not go to. 
one of the categories is uh, people that we should go to immediately, which would normally be people very close to us, which also often would be people who have kind of followed, followed us in the process that know that we are about to clean up some mess in our lives. And it's very natural, it's very logical that those are the people that we would go to at once in this process. Of course, for these people, uh, just for us having begun this proce process, just to see us uh, start changing our attitudes, changing our behavior, that is all already a kind of uh, making amends. But we take it a step further and we uh, want to ensure them uh, that we really want to do everything that we can, everything that's in our power to make things up to them uh, connected to the harm that we have done in their lives. Another category is people that we should not go to directly and uh, we shouldn't do so if the th case is that we would harm these people or maybe harm other people by doing so, maybe destroy relationships of, of families or marriages and so on and so forth. And people included in, in this category would often be children. Um, I know for my own sake that if I went to my children when I started this process, they were, they were simply too small to be able to, to uh, grasp whatever I was trying to formulate to them. When it comes to children, we need to show uh, our regret. We need to show uh, our wish to make amends in a changed attitude, in a changed behavior. To some degree, we also need to go to ourselves and make amends to ourselves. Because we have realized in the previous steps that we have also hurt ourselves uh, through our destructive behavior. And it can be very different uh, the ways that we need to compensate ourselves in this respect. For some of us it would mean that we would uh, take some time off. Uh, for others it would mean that, that we would need to uh, prioritize our way in a different way. For some of us it might mean that we need to take up a hobby or something that we have neglected for many years. But it's very important and it's crucial that we remember this, that we treat ourselves equally with other people that we have harmed and that we really make an effort to start becoming friends with ourselves again. What is important when we make amends to, to, to other people and to ourselves is that we are as specific as possible. If it's money about, if it's about us having cheated people for, uh, for some money, to some degree, we need to give those money back. If, if it's about us having borrowed stuff that we haven't returned, we need to return it and give our uh, excuse for having not returned it earlier on. And so on and so forth, forth. We need to be very directly, very specific in the way that we make amends. So we really do everything that we can to make it up to people. Of course, there will be people that we could not go to in the sense that maybe they died, Maybe they just uh, left the country and we don't know where they are at. If that's the case, we need to find other ways of compensating. If people have died, uh, we may have to give them money, if that's the case, to their heirs. Uh, if people have left the country, we need to find other ways. If it's not about money or material stuff, maybe we need to write a letter and uh, just uh, send it off uh, into nowhere or we, we may have to uh, just give it to our mentor or our friend at, the, at, at this process that we are going through. So we just to some degree pass it on and we try to make amends in, in some way possible in this process. So how do I know when and how to make amends? I think what we really can see is that we need wisdom in this uh, process. Also because there can be many voices who uh, disturb us uh, in this process. Some of us have grown up in a way that has made us become over-responsible uh, in connection to other people. So we take too much responsibility in our relationships, which means that coming into this process, we might uh, see a lot of stuff which we are not responsible for and that becomes a false voice in our head. And for some of us, uh, we may have a, a, a false good conscience, if you can put it like this, in the sense that we are suppressing our own responsibility. And maybe we have put things upside down. So in the cases where we really are responsible for harming people, we have turned it upside down and we, 
we argue with ourselves that in, in, in essence, they were responsible towards us. So there can be many different voices sounding in our head in this connection. And it's important for us to find the wisdom to, to navigate in this area. Therefore, we not only need courage and wisdom, we also need help and we need the help from other people. We need help for those who are walking in the process together with us. We need to listen to their advice. We need, we need to listen to their experiences. And we need to have a good relationships with a, a contact person or a mentor in this process. And, and when we're dealing with this, it's so important that we take time to talk with our mentor and really go through uh, the relationships that we have had, the people who we have harmed and how we are going to these people and how we are going to make amends to be these people. We not only need help from other people, we also need help from God. And uh, it's so good for us to know that God didn't stay up in his heaven, that Jesus actually came down to this earth. He know what it is to, to live on this uh, complicated planet. And he knows the difficult processes that we go through. And it's important for us to practice putting into words what we're going through, the, the questions we have, the frustrations we have, and test out the presence of God in this respect. For some of us, that might be awkward in the beginning, but it's a good lesson to learn and it's a good way to walk. And many of us will quickly experience a kind of relief that when we speak out like this, trusting, believing, believing that God will listen, something is starting to happening on the inside and we experience a relief in the process. So we need courage, we need wisdom and we need help. And uh, it's all accessible for us and we should take we should receive it, take it uh, into us, so we are able to continue this process, our journey towards freedom. We will now go into the work with the ninth step which is very practical. And Pastor Lars has already given us a good instruction and good advice how we work with the ninth step. What I would like to share and to add is that many of us have a tendency in our lives to hurt or harm ourselves by uh, speaking devaluating words or hurtful words towards ourselves. And if that is a behavior that you know you have, I want you to do amend to yourself by stopping this behavior. And in every situation possible, you start acknowledging yourself and giving value to the good things you do and say and give to other people. That would be a good way to change this behavior. When we work with the ninth step, we take our list from the eighth step with the list of all the people that we have hurt or harmed in our lives. What we do is we divide the list into people we want to do admin to now, those we will do to later, and those we might never do it to. In our work, we start with the persons we want to do admin to now. And what we do is that we go carefully uh, through every situation with the person, and we share it with another person, a person who can give us advice if we should go and apologize or how we should meet this person. It is very important that we look into exactly what the situation was and what we want to say. And it might be good also to be clear on what is it I do not want to say in this situation, because often we are hurt ourselves and we are involved. And we don't want the situation to end up being more hurtful than it is already. So the main thing is go through every situation with every person and uh, with regards to what happened and take advice from another person who knows the steps, who can guide you and lead you when it will be good and what way it will be good to do admin to this person. Whether you should write a letter or if you should set up a meeting with a person and apologize. I want you to remember that this is a difficult process and I want you to make sure that you have people around you who will support you when you go through this list because it's a, it's it will be difficult and it will be very demanding for you. And I also will encourage you to pray God and ask him for all the help, support and strength you need. Many of us has needed this in the process 
and uh, it will help you too. I hope today's program was beneficial for you in your situation in life. If you want to explore this further, I would recommend the book Marathonology, which is the textbook behind today's program. I also invite you to check out our website.